All right, friends, good morning. We're right now here at a undisclosed location, deep in the Pennsylvania wilds. But don't worry, we are gonna tell you how to get where we're going today on our little adventure. But we're gonna be featuring, for the first time ever to my knowledge on YouTube, the Forest Dunlicker Natural Area. And it's a stand of old growth timber up here. It's actually in Clinton County, I believe, but it's probably right on the Potter Clinton line up the Hammersley Fork. Last night though, we sat out here by the campfire and I got some good pictures of the Milky Way up in, uh, up in the sky with my phone uh, because this is uh, one of the darkest places in the eastern United States. So you can really see the Milky Way here. But I think I got some good shots. So we're headed down the road here shortly. Myself, Rachel, Sarah, and quite a few others are gonna do this hike. So we'll see you on the trail. All right, my friends, so this, what I'm standing on at some point in time used to be Route 144, but um, this used used to be a bridge on 144, but they rerouted the road and built a new bridge. You can sort of see it over there. Uh, this is Hammersley Fork, the creek that comes down through here. I'll show you just in a second. Like I said, that's 144. This, this is the road. And so back where my truck's parked, we're going to go left. You know, like, well, the truck is going to go to the right, but it's the road that's right in front of the truck, right there. This is the creek, and then this road is going to follow the creek upstream. And then eventually you'll have to drive. You either can drive through the stream or there's a cable you can walk across. I'll show you. Right down here, uh, going the other direction, Hammersley dumps in the Kettle Creek, and that flows down to the, to the Kettle Creek Reservoir State Park. Then eventually it makes its way down to the Susquehanna. Friends, if you don't have a vehicle capable of driving across the creek, you'll want to park right here, just after the sign that says Forest Dunlicker Natural Area. I'm not sure if we're driving across or not. I gotta see how deep it is at the crossing, but if we can, we will, because it's, it's easier than walking across this cable here. But I'll show you the cable option, if it's even still here. I don't see it. I don't see it, so I think driving across may be the only way to go. There used to be a cable. It looks pretty cool. Yeah, you can see it dangling from this tree here. So, friends, we've, we made it across the stream here, and uh, we just kind of parked off to the side. I don't remember exactly how to get where we're going, but we're going to try to figure it out. Now, we're walking back towards the stream crossing, and you follow the stream up a good ways, and there'll be a cabin up here called the Lost Dutchman, and at the Lost Dutchman camp, you're going to go left, and that's what... Um, that's what goes up to the old growth forest where we're trying to get to. So if you are extremely brave, you can you can drive all the way up to the Lost Dutchman. I did it once before, but we're going to walk it because we like to see the sights along the way. Plus, we don't have two off-road capable vehicles. My dad has the rest of the crew and his truck ain't going to make it. But I would say this is no worse than what we did at Grayson Highlands as far as the road goes. But this is a pretty walk though, uh, up and down Hammersley Fork, which is right beside us, just down that way. So essentially you just cross the river and you follow, follow the creek up. So friends, as you can see, if you are planning to drive up here, you're gonna get muddy. But this muddy road is also why we don't have the dogs with us today. They're back at camp. You could just see the mess of what they would become coming up this road. Now, the few times we have brought the dogs up here, it is 
it is fun because they're both bird dogs and they're both very good at finding the Pennsylvania State bird, the ruffed grouse. And so usually as we're walking up this trail, they're flushing birds the whole way up. And up here is probably one of the few places left in the state where there's a plentiful population of grouse. If you are looking to do this hike and you're an RV or a uh, tent camper or whatever, Kettle Creek State Park is just down the road towards Renova and Ole Bowl is just up 144 the other way. We have episodes on both of those state parks. If you check out our Pennsylvania RV camping playlist, you'll find both in there. So there's quite a few cabins back this road and what a beautiful place this would be to have a cabin. Hard to get to, remote, quiet, and look at all these big beautiful sycamore trees. And sycamores has always been one of my favorite trees, friends, and uh, this area along the creek down here is loaded with them. I think all this was logged at some point in time, but generally speaking, it's pretty remote, untouched wilderness. No one, no one comes back here. If you decide to drive up and navigate the mud holes, right here is where you'll park. Next to this old old chimney here, they do not want you parking up by the Lost Dutchman camp. So you'll have to park back here and then walk back to the, to the trailhead. Think of whatever this was attached to back in the day and how awesome whatever that was would have been. I'm sure it got washed away. And there's some sort of grave marker across uh, over there. Okay. So... Yeah, if I was going to be buried somewhere back here, it'd be back here would be a spot. If you've been following the channel, you'll know that we travel all over the East Coast, up and down it several times. But here in the mountains, Appalachia, this this is where my heart's at. So, so this is it's always been one of my favorite hikes. It's been years since we've done it, and so I'm excited to share this one with you because it's. It's got a lot of personal like memories and things. This is uh, when Rachel and I first met. This was one of our first dates actually. <laughs> was uh, was coming up here. We did this exact exact walk almost 10 years ago. So so it's very sentimental. Young Dutchman, that's what it's called. This camp here, the Young Dutchman. Established 1952. Uh, uh, to get to the trail, you walk past uh, this camp up where they're at and then I think you got across the creek and there's a waterfall just up here and uh, we'll show you that when we get to it and that's where the trail starts and there's a sign somewhere too so you go past the young Dutchman camp and you keep following the trail up up along the creek here and you'll come to one final stream crossing and then you go across the stream crossing there's this rock ledge back here and the waterfall should be just behind it Oh, and right there's the path. It's, what's it say? Beach, beach bottom trail. So, but yeah, the waterfall's over here. So we're gonna take you over here first, and then we'll head up the beach bottom trail. Now this is probably I don't know if I'll film much going up, but I wanted to give you accurate directions as to how to find this place. But walking up this hollow, it really reminds me of being out west and um, just the environment and stuff. Oh, and check out these flowers up here by the waterfall.
so my aunt was telling me these red flowers here are bee balm. I didn't know they were red, but she said she has red ones at the house, so I've definitely learned a few new things actually today on this on this short walk already now. Uh, I want to show you where the actual trailhead is, and then uh, so I'm walking back away from the waterfall now, and then uh, we'll probably just enjoy the hike until we get up to the timber. So it's a good walk from here. I don't know how far it is, but Rachel's tracking this hike, so we will tell you at the end how far it was. It's pretty. It's as pretty as I remember. I don't. I don't know what else you want me to tell you. It's hot and humid. It's July. Uh, doing anything this time of year is, is rough. And that's when we always do this hike. I don't know why, but that's when we always do this hike. Yeah, it was about nine years ago. This time of year, we did this hike for the first time, and I think it was hot then. And we were sleeping in a tent, up just up the road somewhere. So, yeah. yeah I don't know what's wrong with us. It's just it is what it is. But. We're going to head on up the holler. So friends, the lesser traveled paths here deep in the Pennsylvania wilds, they really have an atmosphere all their own. Uh, with all this fern growth here, this canyon or gorge or whatever you want to call it, you can see just over top of me, it just has a magical, magical feel to it and it's really neat with all the sunlight creeping in through the hemlock trees above me it might not do that well as far as camera goes with all the like with all the light probably tough to see but if you come here it's you'll enjoy it with your eyes this is a place where you just have to be here you just ought to come here and we haven't even we haven't got to the old growth yet. Now, the cherry trees up at the top here, they're all dead. Uh, so I believe there's some hemlock and white pine left. But cherry is more disease prone. So they're all, they're all gone, unfortunately. 
Well friends, we have made it to the virgin forest. This is the first big tree. It's right on the right side of the trail here. There's, there's ones bigger than that uh, just up the way. But this, this is the mighty hemlock here. And this one's still alive and it looks very healthy. So that's a good sign. I was afraid that that stuff like this out in the deep wilderness, you know, would be the first to go because it's totally untreated and uncharted territory. But, okay, we're gonna keep on going. We have another big tree right there. I think that's a white pine. So, there are some definite signs of the, the forest dying. That tree right there in particular, I don't know if it was a hemlock or not, I can't tell, but it's dead. And I'm not sure if it's the adelgid or if it's something else. Uh, normally you can tell on the lower branches. If you flip the needles upside down, you'll see the white fuzzy things. And that's what the adelgid is. Now, someone asked me about it in a recent video. What it is, is they're little tiny bugs and they, they start on the bottom branches and work the way up the tree and they suck the sap out of the branches and all the nutrients and everything along with that and that, like I said they start on the bottom and they work their way up so I haven't seen any evidence that they're here I don't see any on this one um, and Rachel just looked at a tree that's down and didn't see any on the needles so you know it could be something else it could, like I said trees die of old age trees die of a lot of things but I have seen the adelgid present in the general vicinity of here. Uh, so, so I know they're in the area. It's just a matter of are they here or not, I, I don't know. I wanted to get you guys up here and see what's left of this while it's still here. That was a big goal of mine. I wanted this documented. As far as I know, no one else has done this trail on YouTube. This is, should be the first time anyone's seeing this documented. So that's, that's why we're doing this here today. Or at least one of the reasons. I mean, like I said, there's sentimental value to me to this hike. But, okay, we're gonna keep on going. All right, so this one behind us, sorry, we're out of breath. It's a long hike up here. The one behind us, friends, we think is the biggest up here. Uh, biggest one I've seen so far. Look at my hand on that bark. Yeah, that's a better shot of how big it is. I think this may be bigger than any of the ones we've seen at Heart's Content, but I don't know. It, it, it looks like it's really big. It's massive. It's definitely bigger than anything we've seen at Laurel Hill. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And this is a hemlock too, by the way, and a lot of these up here are, are hemlocks. Yeah. That one looks pretty big over there. No, <laughs> William was funny because he just let out a sigh like he's done a whole lot of hard work he's sleeping he's sleeping he's not working <laughs> yeah he hadn't done squat <laughs> except for cause me to sweat more but we're gonna go sign our name in the log book and I believe I have a sticker even put into it and if you happen to come up here and you see my sticker in the log book let us leave know. us a comment or something let us know you found it yeah uh, if you ever see one of our stickers let us know take a picture yeah absolutely picture. okay We'll break film time. some more trees and take a break here.
friends up here. You can see there's red and blue dots on these trees. I'd love to know if someone could tell me what that means. We're, we're above the log book. I've really never walked farther up the, than that before. So I did want to today. It seems like there's even some bigger trees up, up in this area. That one and this one. So, but it's interesting. Now, there is a way to get down here from a road that's up here somewhere. We've never done it that way. We've always come from the bottom because you would miss the, the walk alongside the creek, which is my favorite part of the hike. And that, and I don't know where, like, I don't know where the trail continues up here. Maybe I can get my phone out and look at the GPS and see where we are in relation to the road. Friends, I have to believe these dots are in some way, shape, and form them studying the trees or treating the trees for the adelgid, maybe. That's gonna be my assumption because they have the dots on every single hemlock in this, in this vicinity. They're even on some of these smaller ones. But every single hemlock has has paint dots. Call mommy. Well, friends, that's it for this episode. I know it's a little different than normal, but I absolutely thought it imperative to document this place uh, because it is it is special and hasn't lost its magic I don't think mm -hmm. so so that's always a plus uh, but we're headed back down to the truck we want to catch up with everybody else so they don't have to wait on us to get out of here and uh, probably close out some some of this video maybe with some more campfire shots and uh, maybe whatever Milky Way shots we get tonight the boys the boys drinking water like he did this whole hike himself and he didn't do any any bit of it so but it is hot out, so. All right, well, we'll see you next week, Thursday, five o'clock. We're out.